thank you, Stacy, and I hope uh, everyone can can hear me loud and clear. My name is Diana Washira, and I am from Nairobi, Kenya. As uh, Stacy has mentioned, I submitted a data story that uh, was titled uh, "Rapid Mapping of Areas Marked for Eviction." And uh, it was really um, an initiative that sought to bring about spatial technology as well as land advocacy. And uh, I'll begin by just sharing a bit and uh, I'll start by saying um, or by explaining why it's called rapid mapping. Um, and it's because it was a very urgent reaction to a land reposition plan that would have rendered about six informal settlements demolished. And um, more than that, it was that this land reposition plan came about at a time where um, Kenya had just uh, gotten its first lockdown order. Um, the government had just issued the curfew. Uh, we had our lockdown order. It was just the first time the country was um, experiencing COVID-19 pandemic. So at that moment was when we had our first um, eviction of an informal settlement in Nairobi. And this eviction resulted in about um, 80,000 people um, being left homeless. And worse than that was that uh, that eviction was the start to um, an, an, a, a further eviction plan of six other areas because the idea of the government was that they wanted to repossess the land that was demarcated for infrastructural services, which over time had been um, occupied by quite big informal settlements. So um, once the plan for repossession was announced, um, it was really quite a, a very, a very um, sad moment because everyone was thinking, how do we get to all these uh, informal settlements? How do we start, you know, uh, coming together and trying to say then we can't, you can't evict this many people. You can't evict this um, settlement at this very critical time. So um, what we did um, is that we partnered with uh, Cadaster Foundation and using their S3 powered platforms, we were able to do this rapid mapping uh, process. And we were able to, uh, using local knowledge as well, we were able to identify the six areas, the six informal settlements that were targeted. Uh, through this identification and through aerial imagery, we were able to uh, sort of create buffers uh, trying to see in case this settlement is demolished, what will be the impact? And using this kind of visualization techniques, it was very powerful or very impactful, the kind of conversation it evoked because people could see uh, that, for example, in uh, informal settlement A, if we do a buffer of 500 meters, if 500 meters around the settlement is affected, then these are the numbers of people that would end up being homeless. If a thousand meters, so it was a really kind of uh, vi visually, um, visually engaging process, if I may say so. And it helped us develop a very um, effective land advocacy strategy, because with this kind of uh, information, with this kind of, if people can actually see through the maps and through the photography and just see then this is what it would mean if this settlement is evicted, then it would mean that there'll be such gross violation of human rights. It will be such gross violation of property. Children will be left homeless. And remember it was a time of COVID, uh, the COVID pandemic. So it was a time also, we were not very sure how to handle this pandemic, how to go about it. So it was a very vulnerable time. And using this data uh, story and our visualization process that brought about spatial technology and qualitative and quantitative data, we were able to actually have a very effective land advocacy plan. Uh, and through this um, information, we were able to engage key stakeholders in the civil society. We were also able to engage actual community members who were able to see, you know, when uh, you say that, oh, a settlement will be evicted and thousands of people will lose their homes. It does not really uh, register in your mind, but when you actually see uh, that uh, in, in this aerial imagery, these are the number of households, these are the number of structures that will be affected, then it begins to, um, to create some sort of urgency. And that's what the data story did in our case. So we were able to come together as civil society, we were able to come together as communities, and through that we were able to start 
uh, making um, or start conversing with the government agencies. And uh, it was this kind of process or this kind of initiatives was initiative was very impactful to the point where the follow up preposition plan was halted at that time. So um, uh, we only had the first informal settlement uh, that was Kariobangi that was affected before we came in. So then through this advocacy strategy, then we have um, then we had the, the, the eviction reposition plan evic, um, halted at that point. And of course, um, uh, because I also don't want to say so much at this point, but really just to emphasize the kind of potential, the kind of implication, you know, the kind of reach um, the data stories has, particularly when it comes to land advocacy. It was really good. It was really uh, powerful seeing this kind of, um, of processes come in and also change our approaches because it also meant that our approaches changed in a way. We were able to really embrace how to bring on board these kinds of, uh, of data in, um, in, in, in advocacy processes. So I think, Stacey, I can, uh, I can leave it at that and then, yeah, I'll engage later on. <laughs> 